I'm here with Jeff Berwick. He is the founder of the Dollar Vigilante and also the sponsor of Anarchapulco. Can you tell us what anarchy means to you? It really is just people getting along and, and, and not standing for uh, anyone who uses violence or extortion against others. There's only one principle. It's actually the same as Jesus said, the golden rule. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you, or we call it the non-aggression principle, uh, the NAP. Do not aggress against others. And if you see others doing it, stand up against it. Everybody got Roger Veer here, the CEO of Bitcoin.com. I'm willing to bet 10,000 US dollars or equivalent in bitcoins that over the next two years bitcoins will not only outperform the stock market gold silver and the US dollar but bitcoins will do it by more than 100 times this means that I'm willing to bet that if silver is up by 100 percent over the next two years I think bitcoin will be up by more than 10,000 percent why is bitcoin.com sponsoring this event uh, because I think each individual should have 100% complete control of their own money and be able to send and receive any amount of money with anyone anywhere in the world instantly and basically for free and Bitcoin enables that and people at Anarchapulco appreciate that so this is a you know everybody here is a Bitcoin fan I'm here with Jeffrey Tucker he's a renowned uh, Austrian economics um, writer and, and thinker If you don't understand economics and you're not alert to what it teaches you can go about your life uh, with ring around the collar, with gritty, dirty dishes, and, and even worse, a state of unbelievable ignorance about what it is that causes civilizations to rise and civilizations to fall. I tend to toggle in my own self-description between liberal, which I think is actually the historically accurate phrase, and anarchist, which to me represents you know, my, my ideal of, my, my conviction that, that society can manage itself better than the state can manage society. If you can get there intellectually, to imagine a world without the state and, and have a conviction that things won't be perfect, but at least they'll be always improving, and that we have a, a model for correcting our, our errors and, and, and gradually building a, a, a better society for everybody. Th that's a big moment in life, and I, I don't think you ever fully step back from that. Hey guys, yeah, it's Francis Hunt. Um, three things, three hats. The market sniper, a methodology and a mindset for your trading and building your wealth through crypto and other markets. The reset sniper, the understanding that the game is up. The iceberg's already been hit and, you know, they keep in the band playing, but this ship's going down. And then the crypto sniper, which is, uh, I suppose, the peer-to-peer -peer and the decentralized money that we all want. The cutout of the banks, the cutout of the transfer uh, mechanism relying on that system. So that's, that's what I'm about. That makes me feel so short. <laughs> you got better hair than I do, so, you know. Well, it's not yeah, high enough. <laughs> but, uh, no, dude, I love it. I mean, one of the things that's fascinating to me is you come from an establishment media background, and now you're railing against that. Well, it was back in April. In fact, it was one of the very first reality checks I did here at Fox 19. Well, Pizzagate, it became a major story weeks ago when an armed man decided to investigate a D.C. area pizza place for himself. And the question media is not asking? Who here actually committed a crime? The first step in full disclosure, inform. I've been fortunate enough over the years to have had, been given a, a number of opportunities. And, and what I keep finding with those opportunities is you have the opportunity, and then if you push too hard, and you make the wrong people unhappy, they want you to go. Um, and then they'll bring you back as long as you're willing to not you know, ruffle too many feathers. Hey there, guys, Ben Swan here, or should I say, Ben Swan is back. After a year in the dark, the only way I was able to bring back Reality Check and Truth in Media was through the support of Dash Digital Cash, which I have described to you before as a revolutionary cryptocurrency. We, I'm so excited about it because what Dash has been able to do is provide for me the opportunity to be able to not present, you know, with an iPhone and, <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a white wall as the background, right? Presenting in a professional way because even though people will say, I don't trust the media, I don't believe what they say, we you produce quality stuff, they listen, and they share it, and, and they spread it around. Pleasure to meet you, President Yedlichka.
What is your ultimate vision and goal for Liberland? Well, you know, the secret plan is, of course, to take over the world and leave people alone. And that's the, that's the secret libertarian plan. Uh, but, you know, we would be happy if we were located in a couple of years on all continents and could really insert prosperity into the places where the people are struggling the most. It was formed on 13th of April 2015. That was the birthday of Thomas Jefferson two and a half years ago. And it's supposed to be, and that's what we are aiming for, the freest country on this planet. We wanted to find it on libertarian principles uh, and going all the way to basically anarchic concept. So we use the latest technologies to upgrade the Republic into a anarcho-capitalist society. That's our goal. want to again have as little taxes as possible have actually a voluntary tax system and have as little regulation as possible and we know from history and from the economic experience that of course that brings the most happiness and most prosperity yeah so th this is the liberland passport that we're looking at right now we actually combine in Liberland the best elements of monarchy with best elements of corporation and best elements of democracy. So it's a new new way of governance. Most efficient structures on the planet are corporations. So whoever pays taxes in Liberland actually is buying a shares of the country that they are living in. And it's I think that that's the revolutionary concept. So the more taxes you pay, the more say you have. And of course, also you get dividends from the fact that you're a shareholder of the country. I think I've noticed in the Bitcoin community, as you're very aware, there's a big civil war in a way going on in the Bitcoin community. The only reason you want to call it Bitcoin Cash is because you want to co-opt the brand. I think Bitcoin Cash has a more legitimate claim to being the Bitcoin that was outlined in the Bitcoin.org website. So yes, that's my position. So you, you personally just want, it, you want people to think that it's Bitcoin. It's Bitcoin. Read my lips. Why do you think the folks here that are more libertarian oriented and, and anarcho-capitalist oriented, why do they prefer Bitcoin Cash? Because it actually works as cash. So the title of the original Bitcoin white paper is Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And the Bitcoin core supporters today are openly hostile to the idea of using it as cash. People look, they try to look at it, money as currency is the same thing. They're not the same thing. They've never been the same thing. Well, if you're not using Bitcoin as cash anymore, then it's not the Bitcoin described in the white paper. It's not the Bitcoin that went from nothing to being this worldwide phenomenon that it is today. If you had two currencies and they were both exactly the same currencies, one can be a store of value and uses a currency because it has lower fees, and one is also just a store of value. And you would argue, but realistically, if one also had the ability to use it with lower fees, wouldn't that make it worth more? There's two versions of Bitcoin. One is slow, expensive to use, and unreliable. The other is fast, cheap to use, and reliable. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out which one of those two versions of Bitcoin is going to be more popular, and that's Bitcoin Cash. Many people make the mistake there's going to be one winner. There isn't the internet company. There's space for a lot of things to win. So I'd prefer if there was less vitriol between Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin itself. I don't know if one has to die for the other one to win. You know, one can go the store value route, the other one can be the transactional route. I don't want to get involved with he said, she said, and spats and all of that. Let's just recognize the the way we lose is we start turning on each other like crabs in a bucket and start pulling each other down. We are fighting against a much bigger enemy here. You have to understand something that like a hundred years ago, the central bank was established to be the monopoly bank in the United States with one money and all money must go through it and through this means it would plan the US economy using the best science. That was the idea, but it fundamentally depended on retaining this monopoly. There's a capital control, right? You know what that is? You want to send some money to your guy, right? And then you go to the bank, you say, please send this money to my guy. And they go like, uh, sorry, sir, we cannot do that. Cryptocurrency comes along and like penetrates that monopoly. It's it's actually already done the work it was supposed to do. It's like a, a little bit like if you if you could drill a hole in a in a dam, you know, that's holding back the sea. It, you don't have to break down the whole wall. You just have to you have to just just get one leak in it, and then it's going to gradually crumble over time. And that's what cryptocurrency is doing to the existing central banking establishment. When I installed MonkeyCoin. We destroy the capital control. 
when you have a highly volatile expanding universe it's natural to have big big moves and big pullbacks it's going to continue in the macro sense to expand within that there will be many cycles of hypervaluation correction undervaluation and pump so what you get is a cycle kind of like a sine wave that's been angled upwards and is tipping up because the net value is one of appreciation and uh, greater acceptance it's, it's boiling man it's boiling everybody has heard of crypto everybody's asking themselves how to use it and it's popping up it's coming up like a volcano it's worth pointing out right now today on bitcoin cash transactions are already, already lightning fast right about a second to propagate from my wallet to yours and have it show up in your wallet. That's fast enough for any merchant. That's faster than credit card transactions. It's gonna get mass adoption, cryptocurrency. Yeah. They're gonna, they're gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be better. Freedom means being able to tell people what they don't wanna hear because everything else is public relations. Everything else is you working as a PR machine for some corporation or for some government agency that's telling you this is the line. Now push it. The times that we live in is an era of decentralization, and we're seeing that with cryptocurrency, we're seeing that with a lot of things. How do you see that playing out with media? Well, I think the, the media needs to be decentralized. You know, we know for a fact that when we talk about national media, there's about six, seven companies that own all of it. When you talk about local media, in, in especially broadcast, there's about you know, a dozen companies that own all of it. Sinclair right now is trying to buy up more, and if that happens, it'll really come down to like six companies in local media. The sharing of biased and false, false news has, has become all too common, common on, on social, social media. media. More alarming, some media Unfortunately, some members of the media use their platforms, platforms to push their, their own personal, personal bias and agenda to control exactly, control exactly what people think. think. And this, this is, is extremely, extremely dangerous, dangerous to our democracy. democracy. American media is distrusted almost as much as the government itself these days. And that is for a reason, because people are not stupid, people are getting wise to the game, uh, they know what's going on, and, and people want to know the truth. And that doesn't mean that anybody has the perfect truth. It's just that we need to stop letting them tell us what to believe and start rethinking uh, you know, our place in the world, our, our relationship to, to government, our relationship to each other. And that's only going to require, it's going to, going to require a rejection of the mainstream opinion that's been shoved down our throat for the last hundred years. The good news is, is that while most people will follow mainstream media, if you look at the polling, only like 9% of Americans trust mainstream media, which is really interesting, right? Not, that means, but 91% of the population says, I actually don't trust what they're saying, but then they listen to it. So that's the problem. People don't get access to our message. It's not on the mainstream television programming. It's called programming for a reason. It's literally brainwashing. And it's not in the government indoctrination camps that they call schools. Uh, so most people have never heard these ideas. Once they hear them, a lot of people's eyes open up and go, and that's what happened with me. When I first became a believer in this sort of a thing, my eyes opened wide and I said, this changes everything. This is the information. Was that the Woodson Churchill quote right. about people stumble upon truth and then they just want to keep they run away? Yeah. Once said that, that most men and women will stumble upon truth at some point, uh, but most of them will pick themselves up and hurry off as if nothing were happening. History is on fast forward. We're moving very, very quickly. And I think if you want to understand what's happening, you have to detach yourself from mainstream media. You have to look at alternatives like Infowars and, 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 and others. If, you, if you're not doing that, you are not understanding the, the historical moment in which we live. A lot of people have a confusion. Of course, the mainstream media, the fake news, obviously likes to talk about anarchy is dangerous. If there's a riot and someone breaks a window, they go, it's anarchy. That's on purpose. They've been doing that for decades. I'm starting to see a lot of attention, negative attention from some of these, these uh, media personalities, essentially, who were negative, right? Because I was blowing up their narrative. So when you start blowing up their narratives, you guys are, so blow up the narratives of what the mainstream talks about, all of a sudden, now they want to fight you. Because you're not playing along. And the way they fight you is not with facts. It's not with saying, hey, you said this and it's incorrect. You said this and it was no, 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 no. Instead it's things like, you have an all right haircut. Or, or you know, you're you're a, a conspiracy theorist. Imagine if Galileo hadn't been able to say at all that the, the earth goes around the sun and they'd shut him up instantly. Maybe we'd still be fooled by those sorts of people that claim that the earth is the center of the universe. If you have a bunch of people that are in control and say you are not even allowed to discuss something that's not towing the party line, society doesn't move forward. It's funny to me these guys have you know, these big you know, 
ugly white teeth and the big brains all the time and on the surface, but they're vicious when they come after you. Oh, yeah. You've seen that first day. Absolutely. And it is a very uh, organized, coordinated attack that comes. The people thought, people thought that I had been killed, right? Yeah. A lot of people thought that I was dead. But the reality is their, their goal isn't to shoot you in the head. Their goal is to kill your career, to kill your credibility, to kill your voice. That's what they're really after. Like I said, you watch the media or anything, they try to make us look like we are like really bad people. Uh, it's the exact opposite. The really bad people are in Washington, D.C. and every other government in the world. Uh, we're the ones who are saying, let's stop this. Let's move on as humanity and, and start to have voluntary transactions. Back in 1962, if you, you asked the average person, do you trust the government to do the right thing? M more than two thirds of Americans said yes. Today, it's 18%. Now, you have to ask yourself, how long can a system survive with only 18% public confidence? You know? I mean, you just can't. There's too many anomalies in the prevailing system to, to survive. And you might, you might say, well, when is it going to change? When are we going to get rid of this Leviathan state? I don't know. It could happen tomorrow. It could take 10 years. It could take... 20 years, I don't think so. You know, what you've got right now is, 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 a, is a ruling class that's, that, that has hegemony without consensus, without even a modicum of public approval beyond like 10, 15%. That is an unsustainable situation. Do you think it's possible for the government to regain that trust? I think it's too late. This is what I hear from almost everyone here is they, they feel, especially if they're coming from the U.S., which is, you know, it's so unfree today, that it's so nice for at least a week of the year to be around people who have generally the same values. It's, it's a wonderful event. I, I love the culture here. I, th I think the organizers did a very good job. All the speeches have been fantastic. One stage, top-notch speakers. Everybody's really excited. This is my tribe, man. I belong here. You know, people, open-minded people, sinking liberty needing support in how best to manifest that. A lot of people are taken by the ideas, but executing that. A lot of people that can support you here in terms of various things. Our angle is wealth building in a crypto space. There's other people that are, you know, health and wellness and all the themes are here that you should be uh, looking for. But this is my tribe. These are my people uh, and I belong here and I certainly will look forward to uh, becoming here again. It's the best anarcho-capitalist meeting that you can ever visit. And it's, I would say, the most get things done meeting that is there on the planet so you really get to meet if you've got some strong idea and you want to make it happen this is the place where you get some people to support you i've been here if this is the fourth one i've been to all four and i'm looking forward to the fifth one it's getting better and bigger every single year with more and more people so uh make sure if you're not here this year make sure you're here next year you will not be disappointed Where can people learn more about Liberland? It's liberland.org. Uh, we'll soon have a new website which will show all the services that are out there and it will be a brand new one, so probably in 14 days. But right now you can register on the old one and we will inform you about the new one. Check out uh, my podcast, Anarchast. I've been doing them on 400 plus episodes, top anarcho-capitalist podcast in the world. Uh, you can check out the Dollar Vigilante. We talk about the more financial aspect of it. Come to Anarchapoco. That's actually really the best way. We've had a number of people who have brought their friends who aren't anarchists who are very statist, and by the end of it, most of them are anarchists. Oh, truthandmedia.com, that's right, truthandmedia.com. You can find all the content there on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, it's Bin Swan, a reality check on Facebook. You can see all the videos there. The marketsniper.com is our primary URL. Um, the Crypto Sniper is our YouTube channel for crypto. Marketsniper.com for methodology. And the Reset Sniper, where we're forward looking about how it's going to play out so that you can financially prepare. And there's many different kinds of preparations you can do. But one of the key things is you've got to be able to survive and support your family. So we focus on the financial element, the Reset Sniper.com. I'm Crypto on YouTube, CRYPT0. And you? I'm Arcane Bear on YouTube. You can find both of us on Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, all Twitter. that crazy, Twitter, all that crazy nonsense. Everywhere. <laughs> one last question. Okay. What do you have to say to the InfoWars audience and Alex Jones? <laughs> well, th uh, thank you for all you do, and 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 thanks for for Infowars for pro at least for providing an alternative. And Alex Jones, I hope we can catch up some point. Maximize your potential and take your body back with Super Male Vitality.
We're breaking the conditioning and fighting back against the globalist war on male vitality. Our ultimate non-GMO formula is sourced from powerful organic herbs that have been gathered from around the world and then concentrated for maximum potency. Super Male Vitality was developed to activate your body's natural processes instead of using synthetic chemicals. InfoWars Life wants to bring you the highest quality products. Our unique combination of ingredients is designed to assist the body in regulating proper balance and creating superior vitality in males. Support your body and mind and take yourself to the next level. Boost your vitality and energize your life. Take control of your body. Grab a bottle of Super Male Vitality today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com.